stuff. Right, this presentation will discuss Switzerland's economic position with reference to GDP, inflation, unemployment, currencies, followed by Alvin giving us some advice on potential investment strategy. Um, just to begin, if everyone could shout out a few words that they relate to Switzerland when they automatically think of it. Cheese. Stable. That great, stable. So to be with, I think it's quite fair to say that, um, that um, when you also think of Switzerland in, from an economic point of view, it's quite safe to say it's quite stable, neutral, both in an economic and political sense. So from here, we can kind of build on to this. For example, the security of their currency, which is capped, Alvin, we're going to go into this a bit later. Um, due to their small size and their highly skilled specialist um, workforce, the key sectors are the service sector, contributing to 72.1% of GDP within the sector, financial and banking services contribute to the majority of this. I'll now pass on to, on to Anya, who will go on to GDP growth and elaborate further. Yes, yeah, so let's now look at macroeconomic indicators um, to support Sylvia's argument. Starting with GDP growth, the recent figures have been around 1.5% and over the years um, growth has been fluctuating around this value, um, falling sharply as a result of the recession. Um, looking at the peer group, so we've chosen the UK and Netherlands, Netherlands because it's um, similar to Switzerland in size, uh, we can again see this relative stability of Switzerland because the growth fell less sharply as uh, a consequence of the recession and it recovered faster as well. In terms of the future prospects, uh, we believe that Switzerland is likely to continue its steady growth because, again, of its political stability, currency stability, social peace, um, moderate taxes, uh, which all encourage growth. Moving on to unemployment rates, uh, again, this tells a similar story as GDP. So it, it shows stability, it shows growth, it shows um, efficiency. Uh, recent figures have been um, at around 3%. And just to put this in a context, the corresponding figures for the euro area are 11.5% and they are 6.4% for the UK. Uh, and again, in terms of the future prospects, um, um, the unemployment rates are likely to remain low. Moving on to inflation, um, the recent figures are at around 0.1% as measured by CPI and indeed um, over the years um, the uh, inflation rates in Switzerland uh, have been fairly low indicating that deflation um, is an increasing concern. However, uh, the Swiss Central Bank expects inflation to rise in um, the next few years and help us into Alvin to expand on this. So just to give an idea on sort of the currency and exchange rate front um, of the Swiss franc, um, again sort of uh, more familiar um, indicators, so against the British pound and against the euro, um, you can sort of see um, levels at sort of 1.5 and 1.2 again just given the idea of the purchasing power of the Swiss franc. And um, just to take a look at sort of the graph of the movement um, of the Swiss franc against the euro, um, there's a sort of a peculiar story about this graph. As can be seen, um, you sort of val uh, the valley that's um, just around the sort of late 2011 time, and so that tells a story of um, the effect of um, the euro crisis on the Swiss franc, and um, uh, in particular, um, the sort of investment of money into the, into Switzerland, as Sophie mentioned, is sort of, Switzerland is sort of seen as a safe haven, very safe investment, um, not too risky, not a lot of fluctuation, quite stable, as uh, Hugh kindly pointed out for us. And after that, you can sort of see a um, quite horizontal line of the um, exchange rate cap, well, sort of kept at 1.2. And um, that story sort of rises um, from that sort of heavy investment into Switzerland. Um, the Swiss National Bank decided to cap um, or put a floor at the um, exchange rate of the, against the euro um, to reduce deflationary risks um, in Switzerland. Um, and I've maintained this since 2011 and it's still ongoing today. Um, so just to end, um, is Switzerland an attractive investment? Um, again, the sort of currency, currency or exchange rate is sort of 
flawed at 1.2 means not a lot of movement. Every time um, it falls below this value, the Swiss National Bank buy the euro to um, sort of weaken the Swiss franc a bit and keep it at a level 1.2. Um, however, it may be seen that there's sort of no story around Switzerland, nothing sort of going on. But um, in light of the ECB or European Central Bank's announcement to sort of engage in a ABS and securitized loans buyback scheme, uh, we should see some um, sort of strengthening and improvement on the euro side. So the euro should strengthen, um, which in turn should weaken the Swiss franc. And hopefully we should see sort of that 1.2 level rise above, which is what um, the Swiss National Bank want. So in terms of an investor, um, seeing the Swiss franc weaken could um, give an opportunity to sort of sell the Swiss franc um, and buy back at a later time when it's much weaker and cheaper. Yeah, well, generally, just to conclude, um, all of this sort of contributes to the reputation that Switzerland has as a safe haven with a stable economic and political forefront. Thank you.